guys, welcome to my kitchen. Another big exciting day in my kitchen. Where are we going? What are we making? So think about this. You have a phenomenal, I don't know, pasta dinner, maybe the day or two before, right? And you're in the refrigerator. It's uh, maybe a weekend morning and you're thinking, geez, I'm really hungry. I want to make something. What can I make? And you, and you open the fridge and you've got some leftover pasta. In this case, maybe some penne pasta. And now, geez, the wheels start turning. So you're in old Italy where they don't throw anything out, right? And leftovers are not eaten like, you know, like we eat leftovers, like, you know, as it is. No, no, no. We're going to mix something. We're going to make some, some magical, delicious breakfast out of leftovers. And that's what I want to bring you today. I want to bring you a, just a fun, easy dish, and it's a great way to have breakfast, or it's a great way to have lunch, or it's just that little snack you're going to have uh, before dinner. Now, traditionally, what this is called is frittata napoletana, which in this case is like a Neapolitan omelet. But I've had this in Northern Italy, and I've had it in Southern Italy, I've had it in Puglia, and we're going to have it today in my kitchen. So I'm excited to bring it to you. So let's go over ingredients. So number one, you know, you're going to have some pasta. So it doesn't have to be penne pasta. It can be spaghetti. It could be anything, any type of leftover pasta you've got. Here we've got one pound of penne pasta. Next, we're going to need some tomatoes. So aren't these beautiful? So I was up at the store at the market today, and they had these cherry tomatoes on the vine. I just thought they looked great. So we're going to want maybe a handful, like a large handful of tomatoes. So in this case, we're going to want about 10 to 12 cherry tomatoes. Next, you're going to need some cheese. So here I've got about a third of a pound of mozzarella cheese. Always going to need some Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese is the, oh God, it's so good. It is the king of all cheese. So Parmesan Reggiano, if you can, and you're going to want maybe a third of a cup tops of shredded Parmesan Reggiano. Next, you're going to have some meats. Now, traditionally, you're going to have a ham. You're going to have a prosciutto. You can have a pancetta. Typically, it's made with leftover meat or leftover cold cuts. So in this case, I love one of my favorite words in Italian is capicola. Hey, hey, capicola, how you doing, huh? So New York, Italian, Brooklyn, isn't it? So here I've got, what, seven slices of capicola. And here, I was just up at the, uh, the market, and I've got here seven slices of a prosciutto. Mmm. Oh. Next, you're going to need some eggs. So I'm a big fan of that free-range organic egg. So I've got four eggs. I've got some Italian flat parsley. So a bunch of it, a handful of parsley. We're going to chop some of that up inside of it, and then we're going to hold back just a little bit to finish off the top. We're going to need some salt. Today, i got a pink Himalayan. Uh, it's earthy, briny. I always say, hey, you know, pink is sexy, guys, right? So it's going to be a sexy Neapolitan omelet, if you know what I mean. Next, we got black pepper. Always go with fresh ground whenever possible. We're certainly going to want some olive oil. Now, when I use olive oil, I'm always thinking I want some high quality, you know, grassy, earthy. I want it peppery. Hmm, where would I go? Where could I get some olive oil? Oh, I know, Vito and Joe's. So, hey, anybody new to our channel, I own a farm in Italy with my two boys named Vito and Joe. And guys, we make our own olive oil. Uh, we co-op with a group of farms out in Puglia, Italy, just above the hill. And I'd love for you to have a bottle of it. So, guys, if you click the link above or below, if you go to my website, Cooking Italian with Joe, or my Facebook, and just click Buy It Now, we'll drop ship you a bottle of Vito and Joe's olive oil right to your front doorstep. I like to call it a trip to Italy right in the bottle. And you will too. Okay, guys, ingredients are done. What do you say we get cooking? So first and foremost, I got to cook my penne pasta. Meet you over at the stove. Water's at a rapid boil, guys, real important. And then hit it with some salt. Give it a nice stir. Guys, only with a rapid boil are we going to hit that pasta. So I'm going to hit my pound of penne pasta in there. And real important, we're going to want to give it a nice stir. That way nothing sticks. And we'll do that two or three times here over the next eight minutes. Guys, our pasta's cooking, now let's get going on our eggs. So I'm just gonna grab a bowl. I'm gonna do everything in a bowl. So that makes this nice, simple, and easy. So I wanna go ahead and prep my eggs right here in the bowl. Simple Eggs 101, you're always gonna tap the egg on the outside. That way it doesn't push the shell inside. And then just open up that egg. So you got one, two, three, four. Now guys, give the eggs a good scramble with a fork. And you want them nice and smooth. And now we're going to prep our tomatoes. So I figured about 10 to 12 tomatoes in here. So with the tomatoes, I'm going to cut them in quarters. Your tomatoes are going to cook down just a little bit. I love the cherry. They just add a perfect flavor. They're a little bit sweeter. They don't have a ton of moisture. So I've got all my tomatoes done. I'm going to go ahead and throw them right in my eggs. Now I've got my mozzarella. Same thing. I'm just going to give it a quick shred. Mozzarella cheese is done. Same thing. I'm going to put it right in my egg bin. 
batter. Next I've got my Parmigiano Reggiano. So again, I'm gonna do about a third of a cup tops. Cheese done, I'm gonna throw that right in my egg mixture. Next guys, I've got my prosciutto. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in kind of cubes, maybe like half inch squares. And why I like to do that is I wanna make sure I've got a, a nice bite-sized piece. And same thing guys, I'm gonna break this apart, put it in my egg mixture. Next I got my, hey, hey, I got my capicola. Cut that in a few simple bites here. So much flavor with the spices and herbs in your meats here that it just adds so much flavor to your frittata, to your holy and omelet here. Next, I've got my flat parsley. And then what I wanna do here is I wanna chop this up. Kind of a rough chop. We're going kind of a rustic look here. Parsley is very earthy, it's grassy, and it's got a little bit of a citrus pepper kick to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of that. I'm gonna hold back a little bit just for the finish. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and shut my heat off. My penne pasta is perfect. It's right al dente, right to the tooth. So I wanna cool this off. So a couple of tips that make this come out great, guys. Number one, we gotta cool this pasta down because I don't wanna mix it in the egg and have the egg mixtures turn into scrambled eggs as I'm doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, drain it, and put some cool water over it just to cool. I can have it warm, but I don't want it really hot. Second, you gotta get that oven preheated at 400 degrees. I'll show you why in a minute. Number three, importantly, what makes this come out absolutely delicious is when you subscribe to the channel. There's a red button right down there. And when you click on that, any trips, any new recipes, blogging with Boreo, travel tips, guys, it'll come right to your notification box. And I'll tell you, hey, it means a lot to me when you subscribe to the channel. And hey, it makes you part of the family. You know what I'm saying? Next, I probably don't even need to say it. You already got yourself a bottle of olive oil. So go online, grab yourself a bottle of olive oil, and I'm gonna go cool this pasta down. I'll meet you back at my egg dish. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish straining this. Talk to you guys in a minute. Okay, pasta's drained, we're gonna add it to the egg dish. So go ahead and just fill it right in. And now we're gonna stir it in. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, you know what, Joe? You should've used a bigger dish. You know what I'm saying? I should've used a bigger dish, but it is what it is now. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in. And what we want essentially is we want the cheeses, the meats, and we want the egg mixed in and out and throughout the pasta. I'm switching to a spoon, there we go. Look at that, who needs a bigger dish? It's perfect. So any of those cheeses, see how my mozzarella cheese is all clumped up? So you want a nice equal distribution of everything throughout. Look how fresh that pasta is, it's jumping right out of the bowl. Guys, to finish this off, I'm using a cast iron pan. Why? You know why? It just gives you that feeling of that old rustic cool yin feel of Italy. I'm gonna go ahead and grease that. What would I need in order to do that? Oh, I know, some Vito and Joe's olive oil. Hmm. Gee, some extra virgin. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little splash in there, not even a tablespoon, teaspoon. And I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna spread it all the way across. I'm gonna tell you why. Not only will this help for it not sticking, but the oil will get really hot hotter than the water, and it creates a nice, beautiful crisp on the outside of this dish. All right, so now I'm gonna take my pasta mixture here, my egg omelet, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw it right in the pan. Now I'm gonna give it a smooth press, only because I love Parmesan cheese, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it. Now listen, guys, I don't wanna put any salt in here, and I did that deliberately because we've got a lot of spices and salt from the cheese, both from the mozzarella and the Parmesan cheese, as well as from the pasta, as well as from all the meat. So you don't wanna hit it with any salt, it'll come out too salty. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this top off with some pepper. Guys, how beautiful does that look? I've got my oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm gonna pop this in the middle, center, and I'm looking at maybe 20 minutes. So 15, no more than 20 minutes. Check it a couple times if you need to turn it. I'm looking for some crispiness right on that top edge and some browning, and I know it's done, all right? So I'll talk to you guys in a few. Hey guys, been 20 minutes. Oh! Perfect or what? Oh man, that smells good. You guys can see it, you see it bubbling still? Okay guys, first off, the kitchen in here, the aroma, absolutely delicious. Secondly, here's what's great about this dish. We can eat it hot, a lot of times it itself becomes a leftover, so you throw it in the fridge, and then either at lunch or right before dinner, you can cut it up into squares, or thin little pieces like pizza, and you can just nibble on it. I've had a cold, hot, drizzled with hot marinara sauce. I've had it every way possible. Just depends on what's left in the refrigerator. Today, we're gonna have it hot on a plate. Guys, it's been about 10 minutes here, so I'm just gonna hit, if you remember our flat Italian parsley, I'm just gonna hit it really light right over the top. Finish the top off. Beautiful. Easiest way to do this is just like you would a pie. Okay, I've got my perfect bite. So you're gonna see here I got my tomatoes, I love that crisp, that crunch. It's just gonna give you the texture. The cheese, you can see the egg throughout it. 
the mozzarella, the Parmesan, oh, does that look great? And then you can see my different meats in there. You can still see it steaming. You see it steaming? Oh, that's gonna be hot. What do you say we give that puppy a bite? Taste with your eyes and you taste with your nose first. So it looks beautiful and the aroma is a magnifico. Okay, so I wanna get that perfect bite. So I want a little bit of the meat, a little bit of the tomato, the crunch. Oh yeah, you just, you can just see everything there. It's just perfect. Mm-hmm. The first thing I had here is the cheese, and I love that crunch. Oh, and then you get the tomato and that gooey, cheesy flavor. And now I got that capicola and the prosciutto. I mean, the pasta is perfect because you get different levels of the pasta, right? You get that crunch on the top with the cheeses, and then you get that al dente inside, and then you get a little softer flavor of the pasta near the bottom with some of the liquid. I'll tell you what I love about this dish is it just becomes more flavorful as you chew. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me in my kitchen today for another great recipe. Remember to hit the subscribe button, that big red thing right there. Hey, make your part of the family and make sure you hit my either my website or my Facebook or the link above or below. Grab yourself a bottle of Vito and Joe's extra virgin olive oil. Trip to Italy right in a bottle and I'll have it drop shipped right to your front doorstep. And guys, one of my most important tips that I wanna share with you and certainly try to share with you in every video is you know, a couple times a month, Shut off the TV and the computer and get rid of those cell phones and get around a table like this and spend some time with your mother or your father, your uncles, your aunts, your, your grandparents and tell stories and hear about how things were when they were kids and make some recipes and burn some things and celebrate your heritage and set some traditions. They'll last you a lifetime. I know they did for me. Hey, from my kitchen to yours, until next week, mwah, bon appetit, though.